if anyone is guilty for the bloodshed that's going on, it is the international community, particularly Britain. The international community has given the greenest of green lights to the Israeli army to do what it wants. And that means the freedom to commit war crimes. You'll see Western values as they actually operate, raining down the bombs on completely innocent Gazan civilians. Whether they're supporters of Hamas, Fatah, whether they're civilians, they're gonna die and are dying in their thousands. Where are Western values there? If there's blood on anyone's hands, it's on those who say Israel has a right to defend itself. Israel has the perfect right to defend itself. Israel has a right to defend itself. Israel must have that, does have that right to defend herself. Israel has an absolute right to defend itself. Israel has a right to self-defense. This is not the whole story. It's not the defense of Israel. It is the expansion of Israel and it is the creation of an apartheid regime even more severe than the one that happened in South Africa. Israel says it's fighting an existential war and it has compared what Hamas did to... <laughs> is identity politic the reason why the conflict cannot be solved? Yeah, Chatter. Um, chatter, let me explain something to you. We don't give a fuck about identity politics in this community. Obviously, like we care about social justice for all people, but... That does not mean that, uh, you know, there is uh, some sort of, like, identity shield that you can apply in this circumstance. Ultimately, the conflict in and of itself is entirely and utterly removed from the, the wokeness paradigm that is just simply a distraction, okay? It's a land grab. That's it. This is why I try to always explain to people, like, whenever people go, well, what about the religious justifications? This is a religious conflict. It's like, no, dog. Religion is just a tool in that circumstance, Okay. Religion is a galvanizing factor, a tool that, that uh, Hamas will also apply as well to utilize, to, to, to you know, make sure that they have a base of support early on. And it's one factor out of many. Obviously, there are significantly more important factors in why Palestinian people uh, get pushed uh, and, and become more radicalized and, and find themselves uh, on, uh, on the side of Hamas as their only fucking mechanism of pushback, violent retaliation. Uh, but beyond that, like religion is simply just a, a tool in this circumstance. It's a way to justify. It is a way to justify land grabs on the Israeli side. And that's it. All right, let's continue. To a Holocaust. Half my family died in the Holocaust. There's no comparison. From a Palestinian perspective, you have to realize that... Israel was the lords, the masters of the land. They controlled all your movements. They controlled how much you ate. They controlled who you married. It's the one that decides when to attack. This is a country used to total control over one half of the population. And it lost that control. And it lost that control wildly. I'm appalled by some of the things that happened. Desperation turned into savagery, and I will use that word about what happened at Kafar Azar or the music festival that took place where Anar. He's fucking right, 100%. This is, you know, he, he's right. It was, it was savagery. That's why I, I think, like, whenever people go, well, there was, like, you know, police uh, in the crowd, and that's why they were shooting at the crowd. It's like, no, dog. You don't have to fucking do that. You don't have to say that. Like, it's not. And I think a lot of people don't fully grasp, like, how we got here. Okay? A lot of people don't grasp how we got here. And then, uh, 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 and if you don't understand, like, the rise to power uh, and, and, and how carefully, deliberately, this was, uh, how carefully and deliberately the Israeli government that holds every fucking ounce of power in that area, okay? How they pushed people more and more into the hands of, of uh, uh, radical fundamentalists, okay? You cannot comprehend it. You will not be able to understand it. But none of us can also comprehend what it's like to be born into a fucking open-air prison that is getting bombed all the time. This is not a justification for the barbarity, Okay? Just like the other side is not ever justified, in my opinion, because what Israel is doing is barbarity. It's ruthless slaughter. It's ethnic cleansing, even though it's done systematically. An explanation in this moment is not a justification, but I think it is apt to, to say it is a violent retaliation. A violent retaliation that 
those who were directly in the crosshairs of that survived have more moral clarity on than fucking people that are 10,000 miles away demanding blood, okay? All right, let's continue. Armed festival goers were shot like ducks. These scenes are unknown to the current generation of Israelis and the shock this has produced, the sudden loss of confidence in its star performer, which is its army and its intelligence services, cannot be underestimated. That shock has now turned to anger. That anger has now turned to a unholy desire to kill Gazans. I think now it's the time that we need to erase Gaza. We gotta wipe them off the fucking That's map. It. Americans, by the way, remember, like, motherfuckers are Americans, okay? Remember that. I mean, are there people in Israel that are saying the same thing? Of course. But, you know, remember how callous Americans can be. Okay? Did Israel use queer people who turned them into inside agents to send the Gaza back? I saw tweets claiming Israel used those who she seek shelter. Yes. It's, it's one arm of, of many different uh, cruel and unusual ways in which Israel surveils the fucking uh, entire strip. I'm That's walking about for every fucking plasma like a parking lot. Kill Palestinians! All of them! There's a kafar as are happening every night in Gaza. Women and children buried under rubble. There is absolutely apocalyptic scenes going on there. The Israeli usually... Air Force deliberately targeting blocks, individual families, and wiping them out with precision weapons. And this is happening now to one family after another. I don't... This image, uh, I want to show you this one image. Because this is the kid. This is what I saw. It's not, there's not too much blood on there, but I want you to see this. I, I, there is a reason. Look, I don't show the, the Palestinian deaths and I don't show the Israeli deaths because, well, one, it's a terms of service violation. And two, they're, they're horrifying. Okay. They're horrifying. Uh, I think that it's really like Ben Shapiro specifically will start off and show Every single, uh, every single type of, uh, every single type of coverage he does, he immediately will show uh, one part of it. But the thing I want to show you is this: this child was hit with white phosphorus, which burned his skin, as far as I understand, and that's what people on the ground were saying. And that video is gruesome because he is trying to console his father in that moment, saying, "Don't be sad, Dad. Don't be sad. It's going to be all right." Okay, like that's a child. That's barbarity. That is barbarity. That is, it's, it's disgusting. It's completely disgusting. There is no morality there, okay? Anyway, let's After continue. another. I don't think Israel, and in particular the Israeli army, can give people lectures on brutality, particularly directed at children. It happens all the time in the so-called stable peace. There were 34 children killed so far this year by soldiers in the West Bank. Yeah, 34 children were killed in the fucking West Bank, okay? 34 children were killed. Oh, thank you for showing me all the TOS parts uh, chatter. 34 children were killed in the West Bank, not in Gaza, in the West Bank, on their land, right? On the land where Israel is supposed to show the Palestinians and the rest of the world that they are collaborating and they're coexisting. So remember that. It's important to remember. It's important to consider. There is butchery and there's barbarity on both sides. The problem is what's taking place in Gaza, which is truly apocalyptic, is done on an... Here, I'll, I'll show you some of these uh, moments as well. This is what, I mean, in the entirety is reduced to rubble. ...industrial scale. And by the time this comes out, the death toll will mount and mount. Yuav Gallant, the Israeli defense minister, the man who said that Palestinians are human animals, said Israeli forces will not be held accountable for, for anything they do. So all the past rules have been torn up. And Israel is- And it's not like the past rules were kind anyway. It was always unkind. It's going for the maximum number of Gazan casualties. And that's what the international community is allowing Israel to do. They have given Netanyahu the green light and an unlimited time to mount a ground invasion of Gaza. Gazans have tried to break out of their open air prison before. It happened on the day in which Donald Trump's son-in-law was signing the ceremony that transferred the official American embassy to Jerusalem. Before people say, why didn't they try, like, this, so much of uh, defense, 
so much of the defense of Israel and Israeli actions rely on not knowing. Rely on not knowing the truth. It basically only it basically only exists due to the collaborative effort of Western media not showing you the truth. That's why so many people, when they do see the truth for the first time ever, go, oh my God, oh my God, that's, that's gruesome. Why would that happen? If you ask the question, why won't Gazans peacefully protest against Israel, okay? I think a lot of people who are familiar with the matter get very passionate and get very angry and say, fuck you, you fucking piece of shit. How do you fucking peacefully protest against an apartheid state, you fucking asshole, or whatever. But remember, if you are going to be an advocate for Palestinians in the Western world, okay, you have to always factor in how little those people know. How little they've heard of the Palestinian side. Obviously, there are uh, still... Uh, Islamophobic sentiments that play a, a a a really powerful role here in their in their indifference, okay. But remember, there are plenty of people who have never even seen this carnage. Ethan is a great example of this, okay. Ethan lived in Israel. Ethan uh, is is empathetic to Palestinians, okay. He's empathetic to the Palestinian plight. He had no fucking idea about the great, uh, the, the, the march to return. He did not know. He did not know what happened in 2018, where every Friday, thousands of Palestinian women, children, men, don't say eh, okay? They walked to the border wall and got shot by IDF snipers. They simply did not know. So if you don't even know that part of the, uh, of the puzzle, okay, because you've never been... You've never heard it, okay? You've never heard that part of the puzzle. Yeah, you are going to develop a perspective that is completely devoid of, of the, the reality on the ground. Stop yelling at people and, and uh, saying they're evil if they are empathetic and willing to hear it out. And 2018 is only one part of it. 2018 is only one part of this, okay? Jerusalem on that very, very day, you had Palestinians. Wait, hold on. I think there's going to be blood here. Palestinians unarmed who were gunned down demonstrating right next to the fence. They didn't break out of the fence. They were simply being shot at, rather like ducks, with the most sophisticated weapons. When that demonstration happened... Press, journalists, children, nurses. There was a, a very famous case... Okay, there was a very famous case of a Palestinian medic, a nurse, who was sniped. And not only was she murdered, okay, not only was she murdered, they, the Israeli state had the audacity to claim that by cutting her fucking message, by clip chimping her, they had the audacity to claim that she was saying she's a human shield for Hamas. She was clearly marked as a medic, okay? Palestinians in Gaza tried the nonviolent route even after decades of being killed and occupied. They organized the Great March to Return, peacefully went to the fence with the plea, let us go. What was the Israeli response? To shoot and kill 20-year-old nurse Ruzan. Now, didn't, they didn't just kill her. They didn't just shoot and kill her. She was clearly marked as a medic. The Israeli army edited a video of the Palestinian medic, its troops shot dead, to misleadingly show she was a human shield for Hamas. The edited clip condemned by Palestinians and rights activists as an attempt to justify the 21-year-old Razan al-Najjar's death. They shot and killed her, then lied about it. And not only that, but also simultaneously in the media, they said these are telegenically dead children that Hamas is forcing at gunpoint to go to the Israeli, uh, to, to go to the Israeli border as though, as though there is nothing that, uh, the IDF could do about it. They have to fucking snipe them. They fucking clipped what her words were out of context. The report concluded that the commission found reasonable grounds to believe that the Israeli snipers intentionally shot health workers despite seeing that they were clearly marked as such. They shot and killed Ruzan, then lied about it just as they shot and killed many others like Abu Turaya, an amputee. What threat do nurses and people in wheelchairs peacefully asking to end the genocidal Gaza blockade pose? 
They are Palestinian. That's it. A shocking and wanton act. Israel accused over death of wheelchair user. For the, for the Israeli government, this is simply an afterthought. They only look at this and say, well, you're making us look bad by forcing us to kill you. Western liberals always demand Palestinians to protest their occupation and slaughter peacefully and nonviolently. So they did. They've been doing it for decades. What was the outcome? Being murdered as the New York Times and BBC write passive voice headlines exonerating their killers. 60 killed. 107,000, uh, 1,700 hospitalized, the worst one day total in Gaza since the 2014 war. The toll elicited responses of defiance from some Israelis, rationalizations, and others. Dozens of Palestinians have died in protest as the U.S. prepares to open its Jerusalem embassy. The liberal Western media and political class only claims to care about nonviolence for those oppressed and occupied by their own regimes and as proxies like Israel. When their own interests are at stake, they immediately start demanding high Mars and F 16s. Here's a 20 year old Palestinian nurse murdered by the Israeli fascist regime. Who then, uh, who then killed her a second time by doctoring a video to justify her murder, something even the New York Times said was a step too far and debunked. They murdered her, and then they clip-chimped her to fucking act like what she was saying was that she is a human shield for Hamas when she said she will, part she will be a shield for those who are being shot there, and she will put her body in the line of fire to defend those who are wounded in this peaceful protest. How fucking disgusting and gross. There is nothing that you can ever, there is nothing that you can ever compare. She said, I'm here on the front lines as a human shield to protect the wounded. And then they cut it to say, I am a human shield. There is a reason why Palestinians are not killed, they die. There is a reason why Israelis are killed, but Palestinians are always just, they die. How does that happen? Do they die on their own? Are they just dying? For no reason. Who's killing them? Israel is killing them. That's who. And that's only one aspect of the Western media's complicity in the ongoing apartheid regime and the war crimes. Thousands learn to lesson that the next breakout that they do would have to be armed. Hamas is ISIS. Hamas is very, very different from ISIS. And actually the two were at war with each other in which... Yeah, by the way, this is actually also very important as well. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get into a couple different things um, on this matter as well. There are quite a few dead bodies. There's no analytical comparison between Hamas and ISIS. And the main difference between them is that although the Hamas is an a Islamist organization, an offshoot of the Muslim Brotherhood, Hamas is a resistance group dedicated to ending the occupation. And this still is a dispute and a conflict over land and not religion. Having said that, Hamas called its attack on southern Israel. Hania outlines the context and objectives of Hamas operation, the Al-Aqsa flood. This is important to understand as the well. The Al-Aqsa flood for a reason. Al-Aqsa is being invaded and attacked all the time. Al-Aqsa there wasn't actually any... isn't just their third holiest site. Here, you can see this here. This reason. is not Al -Aqsa POS. Al-Aqsa is being invaded and attacked all the time. Al-Aqsa isn't just their third holiest site for Islam. It's also a national symbol for Palestine. This sacred turf is actually being taken away piecemeal. And again, the West is letting them do this. This was the reason for Hamas saying enough is enough. But there were lots of other reasons as well. If you can imagine it, 16 years in an open air prison with the electricity controlled or rationed, food rationed. That isn't Al-Aqsa, that's the Dome of the Rock. Um, okay, thank you for the distinction. Yeah, you're right. The Dome of the Rock is, is uh, uncontested, famously. 60% unemployment, settler attacks on Palestinian villages protected by the army, which Israelis themselves describe as pogroms. A total impossibility of a political solution or even a national unity government. And that suited Israel absolutely fine. When they were demonstrating about democracy in Israel, this part is really important. No as well. one was talking about the obvious elephant in the room, which was an apartheid regime for half of the population, the Palestinian population, neither the left nor right were bothered about it. And that too is an ingredient into what actually happened here, because the message that was being given by Israel to the Palestinians is, you don't matter. We can do it without you. We can control you. And we've forgotten about the Palestinian state. No one is interested in it. Just days before this attack happened was the imminence of a normalization deal. Like, the arrogance of the Israeli state 
in its refusal to even think that Palestinians have any kind of like uh, any kind of retaliatory effort and that they'll just like sit back and be ethnically cleansed in this apartheid state day in, day out as they secure contracts and move towards a peace negotiation without factoring in the Palestinian population that is 4 million, 2 million in Gaza and 2 million at least in the West Bank is unimaginable to me. That is so fucking insane. It's so insane it is just simply to tell the palestinians you need to sit back and you need to take it there is nothing you can do there is nothing you can do about it there is you will just sit there and you'll take it we will take your homes we will kill you we will arm the settlers on stolen land to come and harass you we will use the idf to clear this space we will make living room for ourselves for our people okay between Saudi Arabia and Israel. And Netanyahu got up in the United Nations General Assembly waving a map that eradicated Palestine completely and saying, we'll build a new corridor of peace and prosperity that this is like a couple days before the, the Al-Aqsa flood operation. Connects Asia through the UAE, Saudi Arabia, Jordan, Israel to Europe. This is an extraordinary change. A monumental change. Reversing the logic of the last possibility of an agreement on a two-state solution, which is in 2002, which was called the Arab Peace Initiative. You've got Israel that's turning the screw all the time and encroaching. There are now 700,000 settlers. It's impossible to put Palestinian state, and everyone knows it. But Yeah, the, this is why I am not a two-stater. And and uh, and I was wrong uh, early on to be a two stater because I was oblivious to the realities. You cannot have a two state solution with seven hundred thousand illegal settlers occupying the West Bank. You cannot do that because that then you're not you're not willing to 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 treat Palestinians with humanity and dignity. You are just using the two state to maintain an apartheid state. It has to be a secular, solitary, singular state where Palestinians, Muslims, Christians, Jews have equal rights. You have to give reparations and a right to return to the Palestinians. And that is not my fucking perspective on the matter. That is literally international law. That is what the UN wanted. That is what the UN originally wanted in 1948 in the immediate aftermath of the Nakba, even though they were technically saying that there should be a, a, a two separate states. That is what they said, that Palestinians that were forcibly expelled in the Nakba should have a right to return and should get reparations if they do not return from the Israeli state. For those of you who say, didn't Palestinians deny the two-state solution? Once again, my friend, I am going to be very charitable to you and I'm going to assume that you are unfamiliar, okay? what It depends on what time you are asking this question. If you ask now, Israelis and Palestinians both, of course, understandably think a two-state solution is bad, just like I do, because Either you forcibly expel every single settler from the West Bank and then participate in a two-state solution, or you have a singular state at this moment. Because of Israel's actions in the West Bank and its endless colonial expansion and occupation, you cannot have a two-state solution. This is precisely the reason why both Israelis and Palestinians no longer believe a two-state solution is viable. But... There was a point in time when, yes, Palestinians wanted a two-state solution. Absolutely. fucking lutely There was a point in time where those who were working to facilitate a two-state solution, Yasser, led by Yasser Arafat, were incredibly popular, unimaginably popular. That were The Palestinians were united. And what happened? Israel treated the, the, the Palestinian authority, Israel treated the... the uh, Palestinian leadership that always, time and time again, wanted uh, to to collaborate with Israel and and hope that Israel will treat those Palestinians with dignity and humanity. They were cast aside. They were played a fool. They were treated like fucking shit. 
over and over again. You think people are blind to that reality? Of course not. And that was by design. That was by design. That's the other part. This was always and forever the goal of the Israeli state to prop up a fundamentalist Islamist group like Hamas, which they did deliberately, and have that group facilitate violence every single time there was a peaceful deal that could have happened, every single time there was a peaceful deal that they would also renege on those conditions on time and time again and lie and say, oh, they never wanted it, they never wanted it, when all accounts point to that being a fucking lie. Palestinians were forced to compromise over and over and over and over again and slowly but surely deliberately pushed into the hands of more reactionary uh, emancipatory movements like Hamas, okay? And Hamas's current charter, the 2017 charter, is infinitely more moderate than the original 1988 charter, which everyone always uses, but it doesn't really matter. They are still, obviously, Islamist fundamentalists with more moderate components in it now. It's more diverse than you think it is, but of course... That's, uh, it, it ultimately doesn't matter. It ultimately does not matter because they were propped up and, and put into that position specifically so they would be the violent ones so that, so that Israel could show all Palestinians are Hamas. They are with Hamas. And when you, when you humiliate Palestinians that are trying to coexist, when you keep are hurting them when you keep killing them when you keep taking their fucking land as israel has done in the west bank of course after a certain point policy you'd be like okay well the fuck are we supposed to do a two-state solution is cynically it's a policy of all european governments and america it's a policy that can't now possibly exist and that is the situation that the palestinians are facing now what the hamas attack has done is to say i'm sorry we're here you cannot ignore us now they've done it in a brutal way they have definitely committed crimes against humanity. But the Palestinians, who would not necessarily support Hamas at all, would say, what the hell else do we do? And that's what's happening all over the place to a new generation of Palestinians. And this is the fundamental problem of Israel thinking that it can wipe Gaza out. It can wipe Gaza out. It can kill 10,000 people, 20,000 people. Which it, it has. It cannot kill the Palestinian cause. You will always and forever be, one, haunted by your crimes, and two, endlessly, endlessly fought back against. That is not a threat, okay? That is a 100% likelihood. You have to understand. You cannot do this to people and, and have them forget that you did this to them, okay? Why I always say, there's only two ways out of a conflict. Either you engage and facilitate in permanent genocide, okay? And even then, that is a self-defeating fascist ideology that will inevitably, inevitably cripple your nation state as well. It might take 100 years. It might take 50 years, but it will happen. It might take 250 years, like some countries that are now coming to the closing point of their empire but they will always people will always remember they will always fight back that's why so many people that's why so many people uh in israel who were victims of the palestinian militant reaction and action on october 7th themselves have recognized why this happened because they are the ones who are most interested in stopping it ensuring that it does not continue Hamas is a complicated organization to describe. It has various wings. There is a faction of Hamas that controls Gaza, and there is Mohammed al-Dif, the head of the Qassam Brigade, named after a Syrian preacher who turned to resistance under the British mandate. He was killed by the British in a forest outside Jenin. What the West and Israel permanently misunderstands about the nature of Palestinian resistance was that his name an example lived on. If Israel now succeeds in eradicating the military leadership, the Qassam brigades of yeah. Gaza, and kills them all, what do you think is going to happen to the memory that they leave behind? Yes, they can level Gaza. They can reduce the whole thing to a pile of rubble. They can kill 100,000 people, and they can say, and they have. done.
and they can even defeat Hezbollah. But what do you think is going to happen to... Which, I mean, I don't even think they can do that second part, or they haven't been able to in the past, so... The memory of all those dead in a new generation that will break out with even stronger force in 20 or 30 years' time. That's history. That's what's happened before. Resistance, arm resistance, has been crushed many times. It was crushed in 1948. It was crushed in 1969. It was crushed in 1973. It is looking at the situation in Israel and thinking that more violent means is going to somehow solve this conflict is so utterly insane to me. Because for 75 years, you have done the same thing. You've bullied these people, you've humiliated these people, you've taken their lands, you've killed them, you've expelled them, you've subjugated them, you've chained them, you've refused to give them the dignity and the humanity when time and time again, parts resisted violently, okay? But there was an overwhelming consensus that the, the, and a recognition that they wanted to survive and you showed them you never showed them an ounce of fucking dignity. You never treated them as peers. You never treated them as equals. You constantly fucking kept doubling down on your violence. And that's precisely how this situation went from throwing fucking rocks in the first intifada and engaging in strikes to explosives in the second one and suicide bombs, which only accelerated with America's war on terror as well. It's ridiculous. How can you... How can you think that you can try the same thing over and over again? Try the same thing over and over again and expect a different result when the situation has only gotten more fucking violent. Problem is, what will other countries do? The West already made their statement and I doubt that Iran or Hezbollah will help because if Israel closes the cease of existence, they will use nukes, but before this, USA will help. No, uh, I think that uh, Hezbollah, I think, I suspect that uh, Hamas assumed that Hezbollah would open a, a two-front war, okay, and that Iran would potentially come to help as well. This did not happen. And, and now I think that uh, Seymour Hirsch is, I, I agree with the, with the Hirsch man's analysis on the matter, uh, or at least I agree with uh, whatever, whoever he's uh, getting sources from, that... Uh, they are just going to wipe out as many buildings as possible and start dropping uh, JDAMs and, uh, and, and bunker busters to try to destroy the complex tunnel network uh, that is underneath Gaza and then go in afterwards, including the Bob Menendez part, which is pretty funny. Israeli police officer threatens reporter live on air. Yeah, we're going to cover that in a second. It's been crushed regularly. And what has happened? Hamas is now much, much stronger than previous iterations of it. So there's always... Yeah, that's the other part of it. Like, this is it. This is like, this is the question. Like, what do you think? I mean, why? how can you not see it? How can you not see that this is a deliberate Netanyahu policy as well? And it's not like he hides it. He says it. He says that this is, this is what he wants to do. He has said that this is what his goal is, is to prop up Hamas, make Hamas the, 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 the force to reckon with, that, uh, to make it seem as though Hamas is like the only, uh, the, the only fucking uh, uh, force to, to negotiate with in any means, to take seriously. And that's a two-pronged approach. You take the Palestinian Authority, a secular institution that has tried to collaborate with Israel time and time again, and you fucking use them as a part of your security apparatus. Uh, you, you turn them into dogs, collaborative dogs in the eyes of the Palestinians. You don't offer any fucking meaningful concessions or an opportunity for people to fucking breathe for a singular moment in the West Bank. And then you literally even make sure that aid goes through Hamas as well personally and deliberately. Netanyahu has openly stated that this is his goal. The most successful way to thwart an effort of, of Palestinian state building is by propping up Hamas as the singular force for Palestinians. To be Whoever you call them, a very strong element of Palestinians who say the only way of changing the situation is by armed resistance until they are involved in proper negotiations and a peace deal and a calm 
and an exchange of prisoners. But if Israel thinks that they can wipe out Hamas and wipe out the Palestinian resistance, history tells us they are completely wrong. And all we are doing now is setting the seas for an even more powerful round of resistance in one or two decades to come. How do we stop the violence? We stop the violence by reversing course, by realizing that the Palestinians are people, that there's always going to be resistance. Genuinely, does Hamas, they know they're being used like this by Bibi and Israel? No, they don't. I don't think that they're being used per se. Why the fuck would they give a shit? Netanyahu doesn't just prop up Hamas. Netanyahu also gives justification to Hamas's existence. This is something that people don't understand. They're desperate. People are desperate. They just want to be fucking free. They want to live. They want to live. They want to work. They want everything that you want. These are just human beings. Anyone that muddies the water and says, oh, it's because they're like Islamist fundamentalists across the board, all Palestinians are, is a fucking horrifying monster and is basically just simply running along with the narrative that, that all Palestinians are just like Arab, Muslim, scary. But it's because most people don't know what it's like. Even now, most people don't know what it's like in the West Bank. Since this fucking, since the Israeli retaliation started in the West Bank, 51 people have died. They've been killed by Western settlers that have been armed by the motherfucking government. How was that allowed? How was that acceptable? Donation match in progress. Uh, all donations triple uh, 3x by Dov uh, Dovlat Uralov. Anonymous donation matching up to 10k. Oh yeah, I saw this. In Turkish foreign affairs, when Mesut Yilmaz was the prime minister, he went to meet with Netanyahu and Arafat and said, we want to build the infrastructure of Gaza Strip. He takes Arafat as his interlocutor. Netanyahu says, why don't you help Hamas? Support Hamas, not Arafat. Mesut Yilmaz will also meet with the official administrators. All interview records are available in foreign affairs. I saw this as well. Um, let me see if I can find it. King of the Disco, can you send this to me? But that's not really shocking either, for the record. That's just one element of it. It's like, I don't think you need more proof that Netanyahu specifically and deliberately wanted to prop up Hamas as a, as a counterweight to Arafat and to to uh, any kind of secular Palestinian uh, movement that was genuinely willing and able to talk to the Israeli government to negotiate a way out of this. Let's finish this video and then I'll move Whether on. it's Hamas, whether it's anyone else, whatever they call themselves, they are not going to be chucked off their land. There is not going to be another Nakba. They're going to stay there, whatever, and they're going to die on that land. The only way out of this incredible cul-de-sac that we've got ourselves into is to stop giving Israel the green light, is to enforce negotiations with a broadly representative Palestinian national unity government that allows Palestinians to elect their own leaders, that lifts the siege on Gaza and lifts the siege on all the other Palestinian enclaves in the West Bank, and that you start a process of sharing the land from the river to the sea between the two peoples. And this has got to be done with a realization in Israel that there is no end to this until they fundamentally reverse course. The alternative media. Anyway, um, Double Down News is a great resource. Obviously, Middle East Eye is great as well. Uh, and and uh, so is David Hurst. It's such, a, it's such an interesting state of affairs because every single historian every single historian that looks at the situation has the diametrical opposite view on the matter that is presented in mainstream media as fact it blows my fucking mind like and and this is not just like this isn't like muslim historians or anything like that this isn't like anyone these are these are uh, uh this is a incredibly diverse group of individuals from all walks of life from all different ethnic backgrounds including Israeli historians that is the craziest part about it is that people like people that study the matter no matter what their perspective is including Zionists themselves okay including liberal Zionists themselves recognize that it is unsustainable to continue the maintenance of an apartheid state because it necessitates so much violence and that violence will inevitably cause a violent reaction. It's impossible. So crazy to me that regardless of the thousands of hours of historical analysis on the matter, thousands of hours, and these are not like woke people across the board, okay? It's so crazy to me because it's like, 
Read a book, like any book, okay? And you will see the truth. It's that simple. And yet people are so blinded to it. Blinded because, one, they're just ignorant and haven't figured it out. Blinded because they've been lied to. And blinded because, you know, it's much easier to just maintain in the comfort, uh, the, the comfort bubble of, of Islamophobic white supremacy. 